Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yugi tuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, welcome to Rufio. My name is Joe. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome along to the market watch. Let me apologize in advance if you do hear any funny noises. I have two idiot dogs. One of them's a pug so he can barely breathe at the rest of the, the best of times. So let's give him a break. It's kind of warm at the moment and he's all kinds of snotty and <laughs> like they do. Do people hear these noises? This was what I have to put up with. He's fucking snoring. He's not even asleep. Hey, bae. Hey. You. What is this? Oh, and here's the other one. Tweedle fucking D here. Anyway, we've got this idiot cleaning his balls next to me, and uh, I'm just trying to do these videos. We also have the world's noisiest fridge, apparently, and my wife's watching a film, which on surround sound makes some booming sounds through the fucking ceiling. So, there's a possibility there may be some weird noises. I implore you just to ignore those fucking things and stick with me, because I'm going to hopefully make you a little bit of cash maybe save you a bit of money in the process too. In today's market watch, there's all kinds of different stuff we're going to cover. There's been plenty of requests, including some stuff from Echo, a few bits that we've covered before, some old cards that I want to cover and just see how those prices are going. And also just some comparisons with what the US market is doing because a lot of their ulties and their ghosts and stuff are selling out like fucking crazy. And I want to see if that has had an effect on the European and UK market. That is, after all, what we're here for. I've added a new layout, as you'll see to this, and sorry to drag this on for you, but you'll notice in the top I now have a guide for what the kind of costs are relative uh, euros to US dollars to Great British pounds so that should help you work out what kind of money we're spending over here we won't go on anymore thank you very much for joining me and we'll get stuck right in to the market watch so we're going to start off today's video with one of the big movers of the last week's episode. You'll have seen Garden Rose Maiden has continued to increase in price. It's one of those cards that's had a single print and not surprisingly we're seeing the card spike up as a result. This happens every time there's a card that kind of gets one print and it becomes somewhat relevant. We're seeing it in a good bunch of combo videos and that kind of thing at the moment. So it doesn't really shock me to see this happening. It's one of those cards that you've got to decide whether you want to stick or twist on this one. This kind of thing, sometimes it's worth selling because... You know, you run the risk that it gets reprinted and it becomes worth nothing. But of course, the other side of the coin is if it doesn't get reprinted, then you end up selling it cheap. So something to consider, possibly consider selling this card. But that's entirely up to you if you choose to do so at this time. Next up, we're looking at the ultra rare copy of Token Collector. This is a card that people have been sort of fannying about with, just kind of seeing how it gets on because of obviously the amount of tokens that are in the format at the moment with the likes of Link Cross and Aurora Dawn and all of that kind of crazy shit that's going on with these needle fiber toxic plays that are happening in the format people are considering putting this card in it is something to genuinely consider having and to be fair for the price that it is at the moment probably worth picking up the ultras it was reprinted again but you might as well get the better rarity where you've got the opportunity you can get these as low as five cents if you're working in euros right the way up to maybe one euro, two euros, depending on condition, where you're getting it from and that kind of thing. But definitely something that may be worth picking up. Just having your sideboard, because there are going to be formats where these tokens go crazy again. And if they don't get addressed on a ban list that we're kind of preempting at the moment, it may not happen given the current scenario. This may well be a popular card going into next format as a side deck option. I'm going to be taking a look at some Plunder Patrol cards now as well. These are cards that have been yo-yoing all over the place for the longest time. They were actually just shooting right up. We're actually seeing the opposite happening now. They're starting to trend downwards. Whether that's because the deck isn't seeing the kind of success that people had hoped, maybe, or it isn't seeing the kind of representation that people were hoping, maybe that's what's driving the price down. That may be something to consider, actually fucking fly uh that may be something to consider is actually picking up whilst it's on this downward trend because it is one of those decks that people are kind of messing with it does have some potential this hopping in and out of synchros fusions xes all that kind of stuff it is a popular mechanic and uh it wouldn't surprise me if it got picked up and someone found something spicy with this so obviously starting off with white beard we are seeing it go all the way down towards that 10 euro mark it is going up towards around 12 13 14 euros a pop at the moment i do expect that it may continue to travel down towards the eight mark pretty soon 
Next one, Platinum Patrol, we're looking at Redbeard. Again, this is going all the way down. Uh, over time, it's creeped down from around 11 euros or so. We're now seeing it at 750 at cheapest, which again, doesn't really shock me. We may see it actually drop even lower at this rate. From Eternity Code, we're looking at the Fusion Plunder Patrol. Is it Lease? Lice? Who fucking cares? It's on its way down. It's now a solid 7 euros at one point. It was as high as 35, but of course, that was probably pre-sale hype prices. But we have seen it bombing down. Will it get much lower than this? I'm not really sure. It is still a secret rare, so it will hold a little bit of value. Unless, of course, you think of shit like Capshaw, which I guess was never worth anything in the first place. But as a general kind of rule, it should hold a little bit of value. Whether it's going to see a lot of play, it's hard to tell at this stage. But again, it is one of those decks that may be worth having in your binder ready for if it ever comes in and becomes powerful, then we'll see those prices rocket right up. So I've seen some people asking about the generators, in particular Mardell, which at the moment is sat at around a solid 15 euros a pop. We have seen it got towards the 2021 mark in recent uh, times, so do expect that this may fluctuate. It is one of those cards where people are kind of people are kind of considering playing about with this generator engine. It's actually quite strong once it gets going. Um, whether we'll see them getting played in other kinds of decks or not, who knows? They, they have tie-ins with different archetypes and that kind of thing. So it may be something that we see people toying with. But the plant one in particular is quite popular. And next up, we're covering this one. This Maleficent-looking mummy fucking card. Some, uh, I don't know, some fucking goth. Anyway, so she is uh, a solid one euro. That's pretty much all you need to know. However, have you seen the playmat of this thing? It's fucking nice. It's nice. That's something you should pick up. After that, we are looking at Bamboozling Gossip Shadow. This card hasn't seen an awful lot of play recently, but it is one of those cards that was always likely to become relevant again and become a bit of a bullshit card. Uh, it, it shocks me that this isn't gone completely already, but again, we're seeing it around the 12, 13 euros mark, which actually isn't too bad, but it is starting to creep up again. So don't be surprised if it goes up soon. Next up, we're looking at Ulti Tour Guard, the cheapest on card market in English in good condition is 99 euros 99 these prices have continued to rise over time um, I know that the graphs are a little bit skewed there but I remember at one point these weren't quite this high and that wasn't so long ago so we are seeing the prices go back up again I think a lot of people preempted that this may go to three now because it hasn't done fuck all at the moment on the list um, and it is one of those cards that kind of it just has that people love this card man so getting it in its best rarity doesn't shock me at all but if you're someone who can't quite afford the ultimate rare we are going to take a look at the secret rare version for you so we've seen this secret rare around the 22 euro mark for something in good condition, potentially up to around 24 euros in good condition. If you want something a little bit better, you're looking a little bit higher. On the whole, it's around a 25 euro card. It's actually not too bad a price for something that could well go up, especially if it does come off to three. Much more affordable, certainly, than the well over 100 euros that you'll pay for something in the ultimate rare. It just depends whether you want that long-term value or not. So we're going to be taking a look at some of the Eternity Code singles as has been requested. Of course, in the US, this is still a bit of a weird scenario with them getting their product and that kind of thing. So their prices are very, very different to ours. So it is interesting to be able to show people who are watching from the US. And that is the vast majority of my audience. So welcome to this side of the pond, guys. These are the prices that we're paying. So Titano Cider is... Three euros, fifty, four euros. It's not too bad at all. Again, it's one of those cards that they hold value at first because they're secret rares. People think that they're going to be really relevant and playable, and then suddenly they're not so good. Can you hear this? This guy's awake and he's fucking snoring next to me. Jesus Christ. Next up, we're looking at Ghost Mourner and Moonlit Chill. Again, around a 22 euro mark, potentially up to around 25, depending on the condition you want it in. They're all pretty much near mint or mint condition, of course. But in English... 23 euros give or take not too bad a price to be honest with you it's one of those things where like ghost girls hand traps all that kind of thing they kind of have this weird value there are the, those kind of cards that get good some formats are bad in others so it's always nice to have them in your repertoire and available to you um this isn't seeing loads of play at the moment it's seen a little bit of experimental play so it wouldn't shock me if this went up at some point it is gradually starting to scoop up a tiny bit so it may actually be a good time to consider picking these up whilst they're as low as they are at the moment Next up, we're looking at Gizmek 
Uka again. This was one that obviously shot up in recent memory, up towards the 20, even 30 euro mark in some places. We are seeing it back down to 10 to 12 euros a pop. It's actually a really good pickup at this price, in my personal opinion. I can't see it going much lower than this again. And if it does, it won't be for long. I feel like these, again, I've mentioned it before, potentially with the likes of Kaijus are going to be those things that you want in your binder ready for any given format. They have the potential to be really got a good sideboard fodder and it is something you can should consider having a playset of available to you for when it's needed. Next we're looking at some waifu tax behavior. This is what you guys do. It's currently 11 euros. Nobody's playing Dragon Maids. For what it's worth, they could potentially be good. They are dragons, of course. They have that waifu tax factor, which you already know because you're fucking paying it for half of them. But the fact that they are dragons does mean that they've got an awful lot of support available to them. They have a really interesting, unique playstyle. The question is whether that will take off or whether it will be sufficient enough to carry them. Maybe in future formats, we'll see. Konami does seem to want to push this archetype, so don't be surprised if it does start picking up value again very soon. At the moment, it's a very modest 11 to 12 euros a pop. Next, we're looking at Gravedigger's Trap Hole. This is only €12.50 for the cheapest, pushing up to around €13, €14 Euro mark overall. Whether it's worth twisting on, I'm not really sure. Uh, it seems like a good enough card, but it's not really seen any play. The thing to consider, it is still a trap, so it is going to be pretty slow overall. Um, we get some formats where traps work really well, so it might be a good thing to have available to you at some point i'm not really sure for this kind of price maybe you should wait on this one i personally will and see if it goes down a little bit first one of the much more expensive cards from the new set one that's actually holding its value really really well in fact it has gone up and stayed up is access code talk this is seeing some good experimentation a lot of people expecting this to be a pretty good card and that is represented in the price we're looking around 40 euros as a standard again you're going to see them go slightly up from that up to around the 45 mark um if you've got these it might be a good time to sell up if you don't think that you'll make use of it but uh it's it's not cheap Next up, we're looking at the absolutely atrocious Lincross. It is an absolute ton of fun to play, but it is absolute fucking degeneracy, which we see from format to format is something you have to accept as part of this game. For a very, very modest 13 to 14 euros, you can have yourself a copy of Lincross, something that I would pr probably pick up for this kind of price. I certainly paid a little bit more for my copy. What I would say is that obviously if it gets banned, that is something to consider, and there's a good chance that it may get hit. But if it doesn't, you can almost guarantee that this price is going to shoot through the roof, and you will want access to it for the next format. Next up, we're looking at Ravenous Croco Dragon. This is starting to see actually quite a bit more play at the moment. We're seeing it in a lot of combo decks, particularly with Dinos. The ability to just be able to draw plenty and, of course, overlay into True King of All Calamities, which is absolutely bullshit why this card is still in the game. Beyond me, but there you go. They're going to keep it anyway. Um, and for a very, very, very solid four euros a pop it is definitely worth picking up a copy of this it is going to be one of those good cards that sees a lot of play over time is it as powerful as stuff like trishula probably not there's a good reason that trish was on the list for so long um but it is one of those ones that you probably want access to if you can make a lot of synchro plays which at the moment seems to be the flavor of the way the format is shaping Next, I wanted a quick look at Gearsu. This is one that has plummeted right down towards the 40 euro mark, potentially up to around 45, 50. Um, I don't really know how much lower than this it will go. At the moment, it's not really seeing an awful lot of play, but it may very well come into the fold. This is a really, really fantastic card, and it is a matter of time before someone breaks the deck or something comes off the list or whatever. It gets some sort of indirect support. I'm going to see the likes of Orcus or Mech Knights absolutely take off the face of the earth, and it just will probably shoot up it may be one to consider picking up if it's something that you think you're going to play down the line it is 40 euros so it's a, a relatively big investment for a place that is like what 120 euros give or take um but if you want it it may be better to buy it now than wait later and pay an extra 60 euros on top of what you're paying now and we spoke earlier a little bit about Dino's Animadorned Arcasaur. This is one that's actually come down a little bit overall in price. We're much closer to the, you know, below 30 euro mark at the moment. I actually think this is a fantastic pickup. The downside to it is that people are realizing that three isn't 
really necessary. There are some builds where you may want to run that many, but one to two is perfectly fine. Once you resolved it to once, you're not really searching a whole lot else. You normally want to see it on your first turn. You don't really want to open it in your hands. Of course, there is that risk in playing multiples. So I think for that reason, we're starting to see the price creep down a little bit, but I don't see it getting much lower than it is now. I think Dino's in a really, really solid place. None of the cards are likely to get hit on the list, especially with the reprint of the structure deck around the corner. And that is something to keep an eye on because that may push the prices up of this card. So if you don't have these already, now is probably a good time to take a punt on them. So we're covering a couple of volcanic cards. Quite recently, we had some bits come out, uh, messing around on social media, coming around, seeing that there has been some new volcanic support announced. So I wanted to be interested in taking a look at some of the more pricey volcanic cards, or the better ones, and see what the prices are doing in response to that. And to be honest with you, there's not been much of a shift. For volcanic rocket in good condition, you're looking around 25 euros. For near mint, you can get it for 26 between 26 and 30 depending on if you want a us print or a euro print apparently um it's not too bad actually it is something that may actually go up so it might be something worth investing in for long term i mean cards like this if you're getting them in first edition will hold a good bit of value anyway there's always that collector's market for this kind of stuff so if you've got the cash available and you think you might want to play some volcanics now might be a good time to pick this one up and continuing to look at volcanics we're actually seeing ultimate rare volcanic doom fire here this is at around 12 euros a pop at the moment but they are quickly being bought out at that kind of price as you can see there and then you're looking 20 to 25 euros plus recently we saw this as low as 11 you could even get it for around five euros at one point in recent memory so the price on this is going to start scooping up around now especially with this volcanic support coming out and people want the highest rarities and the other thing to remember is this crazy thing that's going on in the u.s market at the moment where they're buying out all the ulties and it does have a a small ripple effect into our market not quite the same as what's going on there but people are starting to go oh well if they're buying it out maybe we should start to do the same sort of thing and that is what you're seeing in the prices we are going to see the prices of old ulti start to scoop up over time they're a really good thing to have money invested into at the moment in my opinion so we're looking at some more requests on here we've got hope harbinger the gold rare version before i got the reprint these are actually around seven euros a pop which to be fair, it's actually not bad value for something that was reprinted. At one point, it dropped way below this. I remember, though, I had this before the reprint came out, and it was around 15 euros at that time. But we're seeing it drop right the way down. Um, it's okay. Do you want a better rarity, I guess? Pick this one up. Next, we're going to take a look at a few Buster Blader cards. Most of them are really cheap, so I haven't picked up any of those because they are all, like, less than a euro. But I wanted to look at two really nice prints of Buster Blader, and I wanted to take a look at the Fusion. So we're going to look at what the kind of prices are on these at the moment. So starting off with the Anniversary pack, the Anniversary stuff really holds good value anyway because it has that whole... Um, the collector's market it's got that really nice borderless artwork that we see and you don't get this on anything else at the moment and the prices on this are as low as 10 euros actually it's not too bad although that is the japanese version you're looking around 12 euros for something near mint in english i thought i'd go ahead and take a look at the dual terminal version that we've got here uh, 150 euros if you fancy it it's in pretty good condition after that, we're taking a look at the Fusion. Again, you can get it as low as €1 Euro to €2. Euros. So if this is something that you want to pick up, for, for you know, it's had enough reprints, so it's probably not going to go any lower than it is now, and I certainly don't see it spiking up. It's cheap enough to pick up anyway. At the request of some idiot in my fucking group chat who keeps asking for this goddamn card, Ultimate Rare Doom Shaman, it's worth fuck all, 10 euros. If you spend 10 euros on this, I think you're fucking insane. I don't know why he wants this. It's not good. It never will be good. It has zero value, Robert. And I wanted to bring the video round to a roll with a look at some banned cards in anticipation for the new list that we may see come out in short time. It's debatable whether we'll actually see one, whether there'll be any changes if there is one, or whether it will be one or two minor touches where we're not getting physical events going at the moment. Of course, they are trying to push remote duels, which you'll have seen me in at this recent weekend gone. Hopefully, I'll have done really well. I'm actually recording this a little bit ahead of time. I've got the remote duels tomorrow, so fingers crossed that goes well. Probably I've scrubbed out by the time you see this already, though, but who cares? So, Masterpiece is what we're going to start off with. Some banned cards that always inevitably scoop up a little bit around this time uh, masterpiece around 14 euros all the way up to around 16 euros again if you want to have it in your collection it's nice to have it is worth noting though the true draco is fucking dead ass and i think even with this at one it still wouldn't be great um you would get obviously masterpiece himself is broken but the rest of the deck is kind of in a weird place i'm not really sure that it would have much 
value to give you. It is probably a cool card to have. I mean, I, I like to have banned cards in my collection anyway. So something that you maybe want to pick up, but yeah. I wanted to take a look at a couple of different versions of Max C. Uh, this is one of those cards that people kind of go, will it stay at zero? Will it go to three? Will Konami be weird and put it at one? And we just all hate it together. So we all agree it needs to be at zero or three. Which one of those camps you fall into is up to you. I don't really care either way. I've got my playset ready and waiting just in case. But if it never happens, that's fine. It's no biggie. There are actually some really reasonably priced copies on the market that may be worth picking up particularly if you can like maybe trade into them rather than paying cash for them it's not as big a risk then or at least it doesn't feel like it at least um but max c so if you want to get it in the storm of ragnarok version uh this is secret rare around 20 euros up to around 30 euros depending on condition uh if you want it in near mint it's 30 euros a pop it's actually not too bad considering if it did come off the list these will probably just double in value but if you're a real man of culture and you want ultimate rare max c in english in good condition, 260 euros. For something in near mint, you're looking close to 300 euros. 300 euros for an American print, ulti, maxi. That's what you're looking at, basically. Uh, do you have this kind of money to throw away? I probably wouldn't spend it on maxi, personally, but... Inevitably, we must take a look at that grass looks greener. Another card that, again, I feel if it was going to come off would have to be at three. You certainly can't have it at one. It's absolutely fucking insane. I love this card, so I'd be more than happy if it came off, especially if they gave us fairy tale snow as well. But that really is a bit of a fairy tale with all the puns intended. Uh, these are solid nine euros a pop at the moment, maybe 10 to 12, depending on what kind of condition you want. I have one of these myself. Again, it's one of those things that I like to have in my binder just in case because the prices will skyrocket. These do always yo-yo a little bit around this time because people anticipate it may come back. And we have seen it as high as 15 euros in the last couple of months. Personally, I don't see it coming off anytime soon, but it may be one that you want to pick up. Next, I wanted to take a look at a couple of different copies of Harpy's Feather Duster. One that people are actually anticipating may come off. It's had a few different prints now, but there's some really, really nice prints out there. Of course, there are some really, like, top-end shit that we have no chance of getting. Not as average motherfuckers on this video. But you can get yourself a decent copy for around 20 euros a pop. Between 20 and 25 euros, depending on the condition and where you want to buy it from, uh, for a nice secret rare. And that's from Stairway of the Destined Duel. We've also got the Legacy Collection, Legendary Collection, sorry, the fucking Yugi's World one. Uh, again, this is around 25 to 30 euros, so it's your preference on which of those you like. If you want it in a nice rarity, it's actually a pretty reasonable price range. So these would shoot up, of course, if it came off the list. So something to consider. Although if you're content to just own the card, you can get some really, really cheap copies out there. And we end today's video on Thunder Dragon Colossus. It's debatable whether this card could ever conceivably come back. It is really insane. In fact, the more you dig into the theory behind this card and how it works, and it's actually really fucking disgusting and probably doesn't deserve to be anywhere near the game. Not, not least because people will just abuse the shit. But anyway, let's get back on topic, shall we? So we're looking a solid 45 euros and upwards 50 euros potentially depending on condition where you want to get it from that kind of thing this is actually shot up quite a bit because not so long ago these were 25 20 euro cards so if you did have one you are now quids in they have gone up through the roof the question is will they come back down again once we're on the other side of the list inevitably it won't have come back off that remains to be seen only time will tell thank you very much for checking in guys that is it for today's market watch Thank you very much for joining us here. If this isn't your first time on the channel, I'm glad to have you back. Of course, if it is your first time, hopefully you've hit the subscribe button and we can see you every single Monday for a UK EU market watch. If there is anything you would like me to cover, of course, drop it down in the comments or contact me on social media. I am easy enough to find. You will see me out and about rolling around all of the groups doing some shit posting and that kind of thing again thank you for checking in if there is any other kind of content that you want to see definitely feel free to request it we don't just do market watches here i do deck profiles combo videos all kinds of exciting stuff and of course when physical games resume we'll be doing some live duels and matches again once again thank you for joining us here if you haven't already you should definitely hit subscribe and i will see you in the next one Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. 
Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next one.